So we want to go ahead and talk a little bit now about the next couple of things you'll want to do in uh, addition after you've kind of gotten your files in and kind of got the basics of how it all works figured out. So uh, the first thing you want to do is just kind of recognize that you're going to have this timeline here, right? And it's going to be your editor timeline. And your timeline has a couple options. Up here in the left, you'll have this little option for a waveform, which will just show you a single track. So let's say I select this track double click it it's going to show me the waveform for that particular track so this is like isolating a specific piece of uh of your kind of composition in uh, audition and looking at it or you have multi-track where you kind of stack all these different tracks on top of each other which is of course kind of where the magic of of all this stuff comes in right so uh so if you you know want to get started you can just drag something in there so i could grab one of these files and just put it in and you'll see that you can uh, it's going to ask you questions sometimes about your bit rate compared or the sample rate depending if it's a video audio whatever it is and so um, you can go ahead and tell it to like in this case it's asking me to match the sample rate of the session so I'll click OK so the place to go to like kind of establish that or what what the session is actually like would be to go up here to go to file new multi-track session I'll click that and then there are all these options in here, right? So you've got sample rates and bit depths and whether it's stereo or mono or surround sound. Again, I would recommend stay in stereo at the beginning. Um, you know, where you're gonna save it, right? So you wanna go ahead and like make sure that you're saving these sessions in places that uh, you can find them again. And then uh, there's templates too. So you can click in here and go like, you know, um, empty stereo session, film sequence stereo, uh, film sequence surround, there are all these rock band, there are all these options, right? So uh, we'll just go empty stereo session, click OK. You can see this is giving me one kind of thing here, right? Then if I look over here, um, I have these new, I have sessions show up in my files as either, like kind of has a little different icon, it looks kind of like a square, not a waveform. And so there that session is. And if I want to open up another session that I've created, I can just double click there and it'll bring it back up for me. So uh, if you want to change things, that's the way you can do that. Um, and the settings are kind of like, I would just go with the default at first as you're just learning. But as you get more advanced, you'll want to, you might want to play around with that a little bit. And then uh, another thing that you might want to do is you might have like movie files that you're bringing in because uh, you haven't, you know, you recorded it on your camera, but you want the audio from it. So for example, I have, uh, a couple of just samples, just silly samples in here, like this uh, this little bit from uh, like a demolition derby that I went to. And you know, you can see the waveform is quite quite loud and really intense. And then the video shows up down here, right in this little uh, window. So that allows you to kind of edit video if you would like to, so that you can um, you know like make sure the timings are hitting the the video the way you want it to in your audio. But the problem we're going to have is that uh, I mean, it only lets me bring in one video file at a time, right? So if I try to stack another one, like I'd need to come up here and go to multi-track and slip, switch back. Let's say I wanted to grab this one and drag it on there. It's going to give me, it's going to tell me it can't because you can only do one video clip allowed per session. So you don't really want to edit your video files. You want to separate them out. So there's a quick way to do that, which is just to go into your video file again you're here under files and just make sure you have it selected then you want to right click or control or command click depending on your computer but just make sure it brings up this right click kind of um, drop down menu and you want to go in here and just go extract audio to new file and if you do that you'll see that um, that basically audition just did that for you right so you can go in here now and if I wanted to I would really uh, you know, recommend that if you can, you would like um, try to title these things that you can remember. <laughs> so like right now it's titled untitled, which is kind of difficult, right? So, uh, so we might want to change the title on that later on. But now if I go back in and I just drag this into this spot, again, it's going to tell me it doesn't quite match, but that's okay. So now I have these two files like over the top of each other and um, and so if I uh, push play now, it's going to be quiet and loud, so watch out if you're wearing headphones. But And I should have, uh, you know, the two, the two things are playing over the top of one another, right? So I've got this first one, this first uh, MP3, 
and then this one is just right down here. So, but it separated it out from the movie file, so you don't have to kind of worry about that. And maybe if you see a video reference up here that's distracting, you could just, you know, anything that you select in the timeline, you can click on and just hit the delete button and it'll kind of delete it off of the timeline. It won't delete it out of the project. It's just deleting it off of the timeline. So if I decide, oh, I don't really like that, that uh, untitled one at all. I can just hit delete and it'll get rid of it. I can clear the whole thing by deleting all of them and then kind of start all over again. So that's just some basics of kind of like how to like play around with this kind of stuff. Um, you know, and if you just keep dropping files in there, you know, you'll see that you've got all these different options, right? And so another kind of easy, quick thing you might want to look, look into would be to uh, watch out how to like zoom in and out on the timeline. Like sometimes you'll you know, you'll accidentally zoom way in on a timeline. And so it, you're just, you're way too close. Like you can see, we've broken this down so that every, every little piece of um, the, the playhead up here is just like a microseconds of time. And so this little, there's a little kind of slider in all Adobe products. Sometimes it has little icons that look like a mountain. This is like the zoom in or out button, right? Um, but you can like just zoom in by just clicking and dragging on these little edges and it'll take you to different places. So if you want to get in there real tight and start looking at something, but then you forget kind of what happens, you know, like you're, you know, you're zoomed in really, really close and you're, you'd like to go back out. You can just click and drag on this little zoomer button and it'll, or you can click that thing and that'll just zoom you all the way back out to like the full view of everything in your timeline. So there are also like, you know, there's little buttons down here that do some of that stuff too. There's in and out points. You can kind of play with that. I'm not going to get super kind of um, into that at the moment so that we kind of keep this first step simple. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you in this video would be that on your tracks, there are options here for like, um, you know, uh, different little things that you can do to your, to your uh, piece of um, sound footage that you've got in there. So this one is the main like uh, like volume, right? And so when it has it says zero, that's like the baseline kind of uh, recording. And so if it was too loud, I could just click on this little icon here and just drag it down. And as you can see, as it goes into the negatives, it's going to get a little quieter for me, right? Um, and so that can be really useful for just like, you know, really quieting down a piece of footage that's too noisy or just but it's going to do it to the everything i have selected on this line it's going to drag that down so if i wanted to reset it i would just hit the zero button and it'll send it back to where it was then this is like the the kind of pan one so it'll like move it to the right a little bit more so if i really crank that up you'll see that the right hand channel down here in the levels is more and or if i crank it back the other way then i'm going to get more of the left and again, I can just hit zero to like kind of zero that whole thing out. So, uh, so now it's equal. So that's kind of like what happens in each track. And then there's also these little buttons here that are M, S, and R. So M is mute. So now if I hit that, it, you can see how it turned the whole thing gray. And now I'm basically uh, like, I can't hear it. So I've muted that particular track. Um, and then if I go to uh, S, that's gonna solo that one. So that mutes everything else basically. And I'm just gonna hear that track. So if I have 15 things in here and I just, but I just wanna pay attention to that, I can hit the S or the solo button and that'll do that. And then the other one to know, which might be quite useful for you is the record button. So if I wanted to, I could actually like record um, into a specific space. So what I would do is uh, like, let's click down here on this one and I'll just hit R. So that's gonna turn on the record button, right? So it's gonna let me uh, start recording and then I can hit this button right here and then record and then uh, it'll start it. And then anything that I do or say now, so if I, if I go back, yeah, I could play back what I just recorded, which, uh, you know, will be kind of crazy. It's gonna sound like my voice, but here we go. So now that track two is everything that I just recorded on there. So um, now if I hit R again, that's just gonna stop the recording button. So again, like maybe it would be more useful, like, oh, I really want some hand claps, like right here. Well, I could hit the R button, hit this, and then I will do some hand claps. So and you'll see what happens. All right, so now if I go back, 
and we play it through. <laughs> Super genius, I know. Uh, really, really lovely hand clapping there, right? But you get the gist of how this will work. So if you want to record something on the spot while you're editing or uh, you know do something like that, that's a good thing to know how to do. And then if you just you want to make sure you hit the R button to turn that off so you don't accidentally record into something like if I hit this button now, it's not going to, you know, it won't record anything in there at all. So, and again, like if I wanted to mute this track so I could just hear the hand claps, I could do, I could do that. And then just, you know, unmute the track above. So that's how you control everything that happens in that timeline. Again, you have your playhead, which is this little blue thing with a line that shows you where everything is at. Um, and you can go in there and basically control volume for the whole track uh, really easily with these little controls and pan it from the right to the left. Uh, and then in the next couple of videos, we'll talk more about like how to get specific about really starting to tweak and mess around with all of your different options for editing the sound.